G'day guys, in this series I'll be making RimWorld in the Godot engine. I'm using uh, version 4 right now. Now first up we're going to start with a nice simple one. We're going to draw some basic terrain tiles, just um, some programmer art to begin with. You can always replace it later. And uh, then we're going to make a few scripts to make a random terrain generator. I'll also show you how to run code in the editor to speed up your work. Now that's enough yapping out of me. Let's get to it. So you start yourself up, press new. I'm going to call it RimWorld Ripoff. RimWorld Ripoff. All right, there we go. I'm going to grab the forward plus. So I'm going to start by building a tile map. We'll start with our terrain first. So we'll start by building a tile map. Now we've got no tile set yet. So what I'm going to do is go make one. Now you can download one if you like, but this is just a bit of a play around. So I'm going to go and make one in GIMP. Now you can see by default, our tile maps are going to be 16 pixels. Whoops. We can of course change that, but let's keep with the default for now. So I'll just go make a new file and of course you can do this in any image editor any image editor will be able to do this but what i'm going to do is make my little 64 by 64 image i'm going to add an alpha channel to this it can be a colored background but let's make an alpha one and just to make it easy for me i'm going to use the grid and let's just make sure we configure the grid to have 16 pixel by 16 pixel grid so there's our grid right there all i'm going to do is make a really basic, really basic um, terrain map. So first, let's just have grass. And then the next one, let's have just a slightly darker grass. Now I think let's make this one a dirt and that, that brown that's already there is fine for now. So obviously this is gonna be really ugly but it, it's just the first version. We can go back and always make this something nicer later. Let's have a gray color for rocks. You know, no need to go making it pretty when you're first making. And let's, at the, at the very top, let's have a snow texture as well. So, um, we're making terrain, we're gonna have mountains and things like that. We'll probably wanna have some snow caps on there. And that's it, so we've got the low level grass, high level grass, then up the mountain we're gonna have some Basically vegetationless dirt, then rock, then snow. Not pretty, but good for a start. And we export that. Good old tutorials from a ripoff. And I'm just going to make a new folder for art. And let's just call this our terrain tile set. So if you're following along, you don't have to use mine. You can go and download a much prettier one or make one for yourself. I need to open my tile map for our tile set. We're going to add a new tile set. And now we've got our tile set right to here. We can grab our terrain texture, drop it in there. Uh, yes, we would like to automatically create tiles in the Atlas. And you can see already, I've got my different things there and we can actually go to our tile map already, grab one of those, go to 2D mode, and we can actually just start painting our grass, painting our other grass, painting the dirt, rock, and snow. Um, so that's right if you want to design all your levels manually, but we want to do it programmatically. So now that we've got that basically set up, let's go and write the code. I'm going to call this tile map terrain and attach a script. Now this class we've got here, it extends tile map. So we've already got all the tile map stuff in here. So if I want to draw a tile, all I need to do is type in set cell and the layer is going to be zero. The coordinates is going to be a vector 2i, which is a vector 2, holds two numbers, both integers. That's our x, y coordinates. Let's just do zero, zero for now. For the source ID, we're going to keep that as zero. This final one, this is the coordinates in the atlas. 
of the tile we want to use. So it's going to be x, y, so 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0. This one will be 0, 1, and you can see it even says it right there. So all we do is we go vector 2i, and let's put in the grass, which will be 0, 0. And that's it. Now I just realized I put this in process. I only want to do it one time, so let's go up and put it in ready. And just drop the pass back in there. Sorry about that. So if I save that, and go back to the 2D. Now this one up here is a 0, 0. You can actually see down here, the bottom left, it tells us the coordinates. So let's run it. Uh, yes, let's select the current, and we'll see if it works. And there you go. You see we've got our one little pixel up there. We're drawing it. Let's try something a bit more fancy. For x in range, let's make uh, 16 of them. Oops. For y in range, 16. And then rather than directing it to go to 0, 0, we'll put it to x, y. So now we're going to count through all our x positions, all our y positions from 0 to 16, and set a cell within that one. Let us do it. And there we go, we've got a big square. Now, this is actually a little bit slow, running back and forth, resetting it every time. So what I want to do is actually teach you how to do it in the editor, which, which is great when you want to do lots of fast iteration. Now, if you want to run something in the editor, you go up to here and you go at tool, and that will make it run in the editor. So be aware, if you're running something in process that's running again and again and again and again, it's going to bog down the editor. So be careful with that. To prepare for that, I'm going to dump this into a different method right now. So let's make a function called generate terrain and everything we've just done. We'll dump it in there. And what I'm actually going to do, so I can tell the editor when to run this, I'm actually going to add a little button. So I'm going to go export, oops, at export, and we're going to make a button for generating terrain. It's going to be a bool. Then what we'll do in process, we will actually just say if generate terrain, then we'll switch it back to negative, and then we'll run our generate terrain. So if that's not clear, well, let me show you what that does. When I put this here, this variable and write export, you actually see on the right side, I get that little guy right there. Now before it'll actually run as a tool, you can see it's not doing anything yet. I have to make sure I've saved it. You have to reload the current project. And you can see now when I press the button, well, you can't really see anything happening, but that's because it's going straight back to false and let's um, Let's do a little print here as well. Print generating terrain. And we'll just make sure it works. And you can see, I am now generating terrain. And if we jump over to 2D, uh, well, you can't really tell. So let's put in another button to clear the terrain we've currently got. So I'll just copy this guy. Let's make one to clear the terrain. And we'll just do the exact same thing here. If we're saying clear terrain, now because once again, we're in the tile map um, class here, we're extending it, we can just write clear, and that will clear this tile map. And let's just make sure that works. So you can see, I don't have my button here yet. That's because you just have to select out of that and reload that inspector again. So clear terrain, bam, cleared. Generate, clear, generate, 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 clear. So that's working. Now, I don't want a big, ugly green square. I want some lovely undulating hills on some nice random terrain. Now, random is very easy. All I need to do is go down here. So instead of doing the same terrain here every time, all I need to do is first make a little random, random number generator. So let's call it RNG. And let's grab a random number generator. Oops, I forgot to put the equal sign in there dot new and then all we need to do is here I just go RNG so instead of choosing number zero I want to choose between zero one two and three so I'm going to go Randy range 
R-A-N-D-I, that's a random integer, with a range zero through to five. And so now what it's gonna do is as it generates, it's gonna randomly choose between those four. And let's see how that works. Generate, and now you can see, I'm getting some very ugly random terrain. And I'm getting some dodgy ones there. And it looks to me like I set that too high. Zero, one, two, three. Yeah, so we're counting up to four. All right, but as you can see, that's not really the kind of random that we want. We're going to get something much nicer than that. So what we can't use is the random number generator because it just generates a completely random number for each one. We need something which is going to create much more generalized noise that can be spread out. We want 2D noise instead of 1D noise, which is what we've just made, which is also very easy to do. And I'll just show you how it works. We're going to add a child node and we're going to call it sprite 2d and we're actually going to generate the texture using a noise texture 2d and then the noise texture we're going to use is going to come from fast noise light which is the same thing we're going to use to make our noise later and you can see this is the 2d noise you get it generates this beautiful map from white to black um, now here it's represented as colors but the actual noise Fast noise light gives you numbers. So every pixel here is just a number from, I think it's minus one to positive one, where minus one will be the black, positive one will be the white. It might be zero to one or minus one to one, minus one to zero, I should say. Who knows? We'll find out later. And you also get a bunch of little settings. So first of all, you've got the seed. Now the seed is just basically rolling the dice again. And the good thing about having the seed is you can go back to, if you liked that one, you can always go back to it again. We can change the frequency. You can see that sort of makes it bigger or smaller. And there's all sorts of little tools you can play with to make it more noisy, less noisy, all that sort of thing. But we'll just keep it, we'll just keep it really basic for now. Uh, but we're not using the sprite today. I just wanted to show you that. We'll delete that now. You know what the noise looks like. To make our map use that, we go back into our script. And what we're going to do, we're going to go var noise equals fast noise light dot new. So we're making a new fast noise instance. We're going to set the noise type to fast noise light type cellular. And you'll go and play with all these different types later on. In fact, we could have had a play with that when we had the sprite up a minute ago. And now all I need to do is it's actually going to give me this huge map that's basically infinite. And all I need to do, get the noise 2D. So I go if noise dot get noise 2d and I'll get it at x y oops I put in an extra parenthesis there and tell before we do it let's just print it and we'll show you what it looks like okay so let's go to the output let's press Generate terrain, there you go. You see, we get this huge list of floats and they sort of range, you can see in the sort of zero to minus one. In fact, they're all around minus four, minus 0.4, minus 0.5. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, if my noise at that position is less than minus 0 0.5, then we'll draw the cell and we'll make it well, we're not going to do random in there now. We're just going to grab number zero, zero, which if you recall is the grass. And then otherwise, we'll set it one, zero. And let's just see how that looks. Now you can see I've got that 2D noise. Now what we've done is we've got taken that nice cloudy noise and where there was a really smooth cloud, we've cut it off. We've got a threshold we've set at minus 0 0.5, and that's where we draw this line. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set some tools up on the right here so we can fiddle with it a bit more. So the first thing I wanna be able to do is change the size of this. This is a little bit small. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna grab a few more of these. So I'm gonna go export bar map width 
that's going to be an integer. And I spelled export wrong. Export var map height, also an integer. And let's quickly test that first. So now when we generate, we're just going to go for the X range. We're going to go map width. Map height. Let's save that. Let's just refresh our inspector there. And let's make the map height 32 by 32 generate. And you can see it actually extended that same map. So if you've played um, Minecraft, this is how that works. You can actually just keep extending it going off in any direction. You can go to the minus positions as well. But let's generate that and you can see that's what we just got. Now, we've got all our different textures here. Let's add those as well. So what I'll do, I'm going to add another thing I can choose here. Export var grass threshold. And this will be the threshold from which we go to the next one. So let's make one for grass. Next one is grass, dark grass. I'll just call it dark grass too. Then we've got dirt. And let's add one more for that last gray for that rock. And here's what's going to happen. That minus 0 0.5, that's going to instead be our grass threshold. So anything less than this will draw some grass. And we just need to do a series of LFs. So for the grass 2 threshold, we will grab grass. So that's texture number 1, 0. Next one was, what was it? Dirt threshold. And then we've got our rock threshold. Two, three, and now finally, if it's none of those, let's grab the snow, which is going to be at the zero, one position. And now I just need to reset my inspector. Whoops. And let's put those numbers in. So let's make it, I'll just make some things up, minus 0 0.45 minus 0 0.5, minus 0 0.55, minus 0 0.6. So let's go and see how that works. Hmm, a bit lackluster. It's gone straight from, it's gone straight from the grass to there. So I've done something wrong. Oh, I see, I've actually done it backwards. You can see these numbers here are actually, I keep getting less and less and less. So these should actually be greater thans, not less thans. And there you go. We can see we've got our grass plains. Then we've got our mountain getting taller and taller. We've got a little bit of snow in there. Let's make it a bit bigger and see if we can see anything more. And you can see we've got a big grassland in the middle, some smaller mountains leading to the big cliffs right there. Now the problem is right now, every time I generate it, even if I clear it and generate it again, I'm always getting the same one because we're not changing that seed. So let's add the seed to our list of things we can change. Export bar uh, terrain seed. It's going to be an int. Now what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to make it so if we set it to zero, if terrain seed equals zero, we're going to randomize it. So we're going to go then terrain seed equals RNG, which we've still got our random number generator there, and we'll just make a random number. Or else, oh, we're going to have to do anything else. Otherwise, we'll just go the noise dot seed equals terrain seed. So if we set it to zero, it'll give us a random one every time or else we can set it manually. So let's set it at zero, yes. And when I set it to zero, it should change every time. And it's not changing every time. Oh, of course it got updated. All right, silly me. We don't want to actually update the terrain seed. We want to set the noise seed to a random number generator. Otherwise we'll set it 
to what's been put into the um, so if we put into the inspector a zero we'll make a random noise seed otherwise we'll put the one we've put in the inspector in as our noise seed if that makes sense all right so right now i'm always using the same one let's set it back to zero and now we should get a different one every time so now we can quickly flip through and see how our generator is working pretty quickly and if we're not happy with anything say we think that's too much snow what we do is we just set this rock threshold a little lower and we should get less snow and we can just balance these out until we get something we're happy with so if you want more grass and less mountains you can have it like that and that's it now you have randomly randomly generated beautiful noisy terrain and of course you could put in one lower one and call it water and you can do all sorts of things with this and we'll of course Grimworld has a much more complicated system than this that we can go and change later but this gets us some basic terrain that we can go and build with and we've got maps now we don't have to draw anything manually we can just go bam 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 oh yeah i like this one let's start testing this one